Hello, my name is Jamie. I'm the uh, singer, producer, and co writer for Lunaray. And now Dan's going to ask me some questions about myself. What inspired you to start Lunaray? Basically, I just sort of saw Dan. And I was like, yeah, I want to work with Dan. And so I <laughs> just knocked up some tracks that I thought might interest him. Um, and gave him a taste of some demos and said, would you like to do this with me? And uh, he said yes. And that was that really. Um, we were already mates before and I think that was a massive help that we were friends uh, and could stand each other's company long enough to work with each other. And uh, yeah, he's a great musician and uh, I feel very lucky that we work together. Uh, which track to date was the most fun to work on? Most most fun to work on was probably uh, maybe the track Paint the Waves. I'm covering my eyes and I can't wait to see. It was a lot of fun to work on it. We didn't we weren't oh, it's, it's hard to say because obviously I take the music seriously, but that doesn't mean that working on it can't be funny. And we did lots of funny things, or stuff that we found funny in the making of that one track. Such as? Well, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't say everything. Uh, there are some interesting noises <laughs> hidden uh, throughout that track and others. Um, it was just a laugh. It was just like throwing one idea at each other, then going back and forth, or like working on something and looking at each other and just being like, nah, and just deleting it. Um, it was just funny, like it was just a fun track, and and also like it was the first time that we actually sat and worked together on something, and it was enjoyable to see that um, we could do it and not like butt butt heads or whatever, but just be kind of quite lackadaisical about the process, to be honest. But I'm happy with how it came out. So, as a producer, which track was the most challenging to work on? Uh, uh challenging to work on. So I've got a couple that spring to mind immediately. Um, uh, Erase and Replace was challenging to work on um, purely because like we were about halfway through the track and I thought to myself oh I can I can hear what happens after this but it's just gonna be a bit of work for myself to try and make it work and that was the bit where it kind of goes Erase and Replace did it again and that whole like slight instrumental section before the acoustic outro that was kind of challenging to figure out the instrumentation of that what sits where in the frequency realm because I had an idea of like what I wanted that to sound like but you kind of have to do a lot of like yeah you have to be very specific in what is playing what when and what it sounds like and how to try and get that one burst of sound to happen um, and make it sound right. That was a bit of a challenge. And the other one which was challenging was Drop Man, purely because in the original demo of that track, I had lots of synths doing slightly different things. And um, I kind of wanted the bass to be like the center point of that track. Um, but at the same time, the synths were also making it sound really cool. But it was difficult because it was like, I wanted to put it all in there, but I knew that if it was all going in there, it would all start to fall apart. So I had to make some very difficult decisions about what noises were more important than other noises to keep in there in order to make the track sound the way it was. That was quite tricky. Which track are you looking forward to playing live the most? Um, uh, all of them. <laughs> I really like them all. Um, I'd say that there's some which are more challenging than others, like uh, Glass. Is a little bit challenging. Flex is quite hard to sing if I'm not like in the in the right kind of vocal fitness. Flex is a challenge. Uh, Drop Man as well actually is also a bit challenging but that doesn't mean I'm not looking forward to perform them. In fact that's kind of like my dream right now to be honest. Who was your biggest inspiration when you started being interested in music? Yeah like it was bands like uh, Korn Obviously, Eminem, I was a big Eminem fan and a big Muse fan and all that stuff. But all that was great, Origin Symmetry sort of times. But um, Radiohead uh, was the band that inspired me to write. Um, so a lot of my early writing is very Radiohead-esque just because that was the language that I learned 
to get into music. And it's something that I've naturally moved away from with time and I've and I've managed to step away from sort of the 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 influences and sort of have I hope discovered my own sound as time has gone along. But at the beginning Radiohead was a huge influence and Sigaros as well. For the atmospheric stuff especially. So obviously in the past you've done uh, a lot of open mic stuff. Back when you were at university you were sort of doing the open mic scene. Yeah. What was the scariest moment for you on stage when you were doing that run of gigs? Oh, so, <laughs> May. So open mics were amazing for me because they, they, they were the place that I really, I've said this before, but like cut my teeth as a writer. Because when you're like, you know, 15 and like you've got a band or you've got a friend or two you play music with, then anything that anyone writes is completely valid amongst like that small group. Because everyone's learning and everyone's like, oh yeah, that, that, that could work. And it's just a very open kind of process. But then when you take that, you know, in, in like a pub where people may or may not want to hear it at all, <laughs> then, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of, in a different environment and some of your ideas are just gonna bomb. <laughs> so I had a couple of places in Oxford that I used to frequent a lot. Uh, like I'd go there uh, to them all like a lot, like five or six nights a week if I could, just going out and playing music wherever I could. And I made like a promise to myself, not that anyone else really was listening, but I didn't want to bore people because I was there so much. So I wanted to make sure that I had new songs to perform every single week. And I remember one song was called, oh, let's see if I can... I don't even remember what it was called. But it was like an idea that I was like, yeah, this is, this is kind of working. Like it had like a verse and like a chorus verse sort of structure, but then it went down and had like a build up where it was like, dun 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 You know what I mean? And it was like one of those things that would kind of like build into like <laughs> a big like vocal like hey, hey like performance at the end um but that ending bit was just bombing so hard and i just knew it and yeah i just had this feeling on stage i was like do you know what this song sucks and i still got like two minutes to go on it and i remember getting like there and i was like mid lyric and i just went something like ah, uh you know what i'm the <laughs> This is true. This is absolutely true. <laughs> and I went, I oh, know, that was bad. That was bad. I think I played one more song after that and I made it a cover just to like, you know, mitigate the damage, but that was rough. Out of both EPs, which track uh, do you enjoy singing the most? Well, Paint the Waves is quite fun to sing. Uh, I actually quite enjoy singing Flex as well, but only if I'm doing well. <laughs> because if I'm not doing well, that run through, then it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, if, but if I'm nailing it, then that's great. Uh, that's really fun to sing. What genre of music would you like to explore and understand more? Neo soul. Super tasty chord voicings, very loose at times in terms of key centers, very free, um, wicked bass lines, people like Thundercat just make it look really interesting to write in that style. All the musicians in that genre are crazy good at what they do. But um, yeah, it's cool. I th I'd say probably that, Neo Soul, yeah. One song you wish you'd written? Owner of A Lonely Heart by Yes, I think. It, what can you say about that? It's just one completely sick moment after another. I just love everything about it. The instrumentation is so cool, the chord progressions are so cool, all the little runs that do little little it's just Yeah and the and the Oh god, what's that guy's name? The vocalist. He sounds so sick today even. And that's that's another reason why I really like that song especially because obviously as a vocalist I'm always like looking at people's technique a lot. And one thing that I I really pay a lot of attention to is not how those classic performers sounded like but how they sound like today because if they sound good today then they were doing something very clever back then 
you know, there are so many vocalists who just like wreck their voices because of X, Y, Z reasons, but he is someone who sounds just as good today. And so for that, uh, I find really inspiring as, as a vocalist because I always want to sound good. I don't want to be like, oh, I can't sing those songs anymore. I want to be, I want to try and be as like healthy as I possibly can. Last album that excited you about the future of music. Meta and Mordial by Carbomb, two separate albums, Meta, Mordial by Carbomb. Carbomb are a band that I have, uh, I saw live at Radar Fest in Guildford with Dan, and I'd never heard of this band before, and some people were like sort of moving towards that part of the show, and uh, they were like, oh yeah, Carbomb, like you're gonna see Carbomb, and I'm like, who's Carbomb? I was like, all right, whatever, and we were kind of like walking sort of past their show, and then about when I came back, I was just like standing there, just like watching this band. And I remember just standing next to Dan saying, man, I fucking love this. It's- My mind was being blown to smithereens. Uh, the bassist terrified me because he, he, he was like a fairly normal looking dude. The way that he was keeping time with this unreal, like otherworldly music was he was doing this with his neck. Instead of, instead of like a headbang, he was like twitching left and right as he was playing. And I was just watching him like, man, this is just crazy. And I met the guys after and I found out the drummer doesn't play with, with a metronome. It is it. He just does it. And that's, that's nuts. Car bomb. Check it out. What's your favourite bit of gear in this studio of yours? Oh, that's a good question. I got a, I got a few bits and bobs around me, as you can see. I've got um, I got a Juno sixty right here. It's got some lyrics on it now, but that's really cool. It sounds great. I want to get this one modded at some point with a proper five pin din in and out. I know uh, Sven Atten, who's a big influence of mine. Uh, he has a modded Juno sixty, so I might ask him where he got his done. ASP eighty converters. They're super useful as well. Um, each one of these is a mic preamp. Um, sounds so good. Loads of headroom, so they sound great on really loud things like drums or amplifiers. My Focal monitors. One, two. Without these things, I mean, produ- you know, production would be miserable because I can't. You know, you need a, such a good pair of monitor speakers to understand what's going on. These bad boys, my Focal Spirit Pro headphones. This right here was the thing which started helping me take my mixes from, yeah, to like, okay. These, the Focal Spirit Pros, are so flat, so balanced. I trust them, I know them. I probably have to say this, um, just because these are the things which, like I say, I really learn a lot about production with these and I don't think I don't think I'd be where I was today if it wasn't for these headphones so probably the Spirit Pros. Well thanks for um, watching and listening to that I hope you enjoyed it um, make sure that you um, subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, in the bio there's a link to all of our social medias uh, we're uploading new YouTube videos every Monday and um, yeah we've got lots of exciting things in the works so um, stick around and uh, I'll speak to you soon. I'll speak to you soon. What are we going to do? Call them up? Fucking hell.